Blog Talk Radio. of the 411 Music Zone podcast. I am your host, the mandated reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Radelich. And it is, and it has been a long time since we've rock and rolled. Here he is, folks, one of the three beards. He writes the metal hammer of doom on 411mania.com in the Music Zone. Here is the metal coop, Mr. Robert Cooper. How you doing, sir? Ah, this is not going too bad. I got my associates from a community college. Looking for a job, like I got like two podcasts that are pretty freaking awesome, and I got free music. So hey, it is a good life. Don't you still have to go back for another two years and then your teaching certificate and everything? You're not done yet. No. Well, no, I just have an associate. I mean, that's nice. It means I'm done with the community college. I have yeah. to actually get the acceptance letter from Winston-Salem State. Those bastards haven't sent me. <laughs> Fuck you, Winston-Salem State. <laughs> I'm just going to go out and say, oh, yeah, I, I applied like two months ago and haven't heard a peep. Yeah, I got to do that. I got to apply for the teaching. Uh, I got to apply to, for the teaching department of uh, education department of one salem State. Then I got to go through that hell. But for now, I'm done. And I, I, cool just, thing, I just want to say it's not too late for you to go into accounting. I am awful. With, I'm not awful with numbers. I'm great with spreadsheets, but I don't like numbers. I don't like think it how... matters. I, I think if the, I think if the banking failure of a few years ago has taught us anything, is that just because you go into finance and banking and accounting doesn't mean you're good at math. True, but I'm not a scumbag. <laughs> at least, well, at least for the most part. But yeah, the, the cool thing about being a music writer, kind of like how you get into MMA shows and stuff like that, like I actually had a PR company come out and ask me to review music. Like they had been emailing me for a while, and I thought it was spam. Oh no, no! They were legitimately, legitimately wanting me to uh, like review their music. So the new Orchid album, Orchid—they're like a really doomy band. I'm getting uh, their album coming soon, and I'm getting an actual physical copy of the new Dark Throne album, just for kicks, just for shits and giggles, because the guys like me that much. When I first started blogging, um, I was 99.9% political blogger, and I contacted a couple of conservative book publishers. And they would just send me books constantly. Like, I asked for a book, a particular book that I wanted to review. And they were like, here's our library. Go to town, blogger. Oh, yeah. Did did I ever tell you about the uh, time I mentioned this band? Uh, uh, What was it? I forget the name of the band now. It's really uh, – yeah, I forget. Anyways, anyways, they're from, like, some random-ass South American country. And they were uh, and they were just like, oh wow, you mentioned this in your column. We're really thankful. Here, here's our entire discography. <laughs> I'm like, cool. I, I like, that made my, that I, occasionally made my I also life. get stuff. I don't necessarily get a lot of free anything when it comes to MMA. It's not like anyone sends me a fighter and says, here, review this fighter, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or anything like that. Sends you Alexander Gustafson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's Hector Lombard. Review him. Hello, get me out of here. Um, so and, you know, and like I said, I've gone to, uh, I've I've gone to a couple of um, free Bellator shows, but 
because of my association with 411, but I, you know, I have, that it hasn't really gone beyond that. Um, but with, with, with books and music, I think it's a lot easier once, once you're a known entity and you start contacting uh, publishing houses and record studios, um, that they're perfectly okay with sending you as much free stuff so that, you know, you'll talk about them. And just as a side note, Twitter has become a very valuable tool in flaming companies that do you wrong. Both my father and I are very skilled in this. Anytime we have an issue with a company, um, and Todd Schnitt actually talks about this today on his local um, radio show here in the Tampa Bay area, where if you mention, like, if you if you have an issue with a company, let's say Verizon, and you put that on Twitter, within like minutes that company will tweet you back and be like, please stop. What, how can we fix your problem? Anything for you, man. Which, is, which gets you a lot further than having to call these people and deal with their customer service department. Oh, I never thought about this. I mean, I oh, don't yeah. get many problems with companies, but, oh, man, I oh, wish. Yeah. Flaming, people on, flaming companies on Twitter is, is, is how, you, uh, how you take back uh, your rights as a citizen. <laughs> Tonight, that folks. gorgeous. Yes. Tonight, folks, we are eventually going to get to talking about – man, we, we put this podcast off. First of all, like I put it off a week because I, I honestly wasn't prepared to talk about it. I don't remember what was going on a few weeks ago, but I what was not – yeah. I was not – yeah, I was not well. Um, I think I was sick, and I think there was, there was other stuff going on. Um, this was in the middle of FCAT, so I'm pretty certain uh, my wife was buried under – you know, students and testing and whatnot. And I was kind of a single parent there for a while. Um, <laughs> so uh, I just wasn't up for it. And then when I, ha- and then I put off that doing the dollars trilogy for much the same reason. I, I don't think I'd have gotten all the way through the good, the bad and the ugly. So we postponed that. And then when I went to uh, reschedule the shows, I rescheduled them out of order. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I was like, wait, didn't you get, wasn't this the other way? You're like, no, no, no. I I, did, I guess I kind of got things mixed up, but this is how it is now. I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. and, you were, and you had been plugging this thing forever on the three beards. but yes. uh, And I felt bad about that, but I'm like, yeah, what are you going to do? So we're, we're finally here. Tonight, folks, Trollish Folk Metal, the new Finn Troll album, Bloodsvept. We're going to get to it in just a minute. Uh, but we're going to do something we normally don't do on the album review podcast. Um, real quick, there were two pieces of news that – happened in the music world that I quickly wanted to discuss. Um, one was Slayer uh, band member Jeff Hanneman died of cirrhosis of the liver. Robert, um, any details or any more thoughts regarding Mr. Hanneman? Oh, well, uh, well, you could definitely check out on both these news just for a quick cheap-ass plug. Yeah, the Hammer of Doom came back this week, and I talked about both these issues, just to let you know. But uh, as for Jeff Hanneman, yeah, I was really hoping it would have been like a the spider bite. Would have, would have, it would have sounds a little more tragic that way. I mean, because, you know, Cirrus is the liver is kind of a bitch. But, um, Does, like, that it, band, it really, first of all, like Sl- Slayer was sponsored by Jägermeister. I'm surprised they're not all dead. Well, Carrie K- K- King would bitch at, like, the <laughs> Grim Reaper and he'd send them back. <laughs> But yeah, the uh, yeah they are sponsored by Jägermeister. Like I was actually really like sad when it, like when I found out he died because you know I had posted the last one that uh, Hammer I did before was right after Dave Lombardo uh, left. So I was like, oh man, you know I really want to hope Jeff Hanneman is doing well and I hope he comes back soon. And I want to see him all together. And ironically enough, <laughs> first first week back like the week before Jeff Hanneman died, like it really sucked because you know after looking through Slayer because last night's top five the music zone was uh top five player songs as smart found out like after it was due <laughs> <laughs> yeah i really should have participated in that but uh uh john Cena was beating the shield and i and i just couldn't i would i might i, I was too busy reading injustice gods among us catching up with that so forget it yeah it was me and ben piper like jeremy couldn't even come up with a list yeah, it was the two of us. And then one person in the comment section bitched at us for not putting things from rain, everything from Rain and Blood there. And then somebody did what Sean Comer wishes he could do and just totally shit on the fact that Rihanna has been the top story all night and all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just uh, shitting everywhere. But, yeah, uh, I was really bummed that he died because he was a huge contribute, contributing factor in Slayer musically. 
and lyrically, especially like Angel of Death I talked about last night, that is Jeff Hanneman's fingerprint right there, and that is my favorite Slayer song. So I think that's iconic. everyone's favorite Slayer song. I think, you know, um, we, my friend uh, that I do the right hook with, uh, John Broad again, we were talking about, we were going to talk about Slayer, um, if we ever get to do that podcast again. And I and I was saying, oh, you should play this song and that song by Slayer as bumper music. And he was like, there's only one song to play by Slayer, and it's Rain and Blood. I'm like, not, wow. um, and that's right, not Rain and Blood, Angel of Death. I'm like, oh, all righty then. Yeah, I mean, there's like, when I was coming up that list, usually I can get it down to about eight easily because I usually have eight in my top. I think I do a lot more work than so a lot of people do on that top five, which is sad. It's not even my own column. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, like, I had, like, 18 songs, and once I got to 10, I'm like, oh, shit, this is a, impossible. But, yeah, he... he I can rattle off five stuff. right now. I can rattle off Angel of... I, I, for me, it's Disciple. The number one Slayer song, I I, I will listen to this song forever. Uh, and, and people know it as God Hates Us All, but that's not the name of the song. The name of the song is Disciple. Yep, that was my then, number five. Then Angel of Death. That was one. Then, then Ditto Head. Nope. Then, <laughs> <laughs> then Rain and Blood, then Seasons in the Abyss. Yeah, Seasons was in my honorable. Mine was, uh, let's see, Disciple, uh, South of Heaven, War Ensemble, Raining Blood, Angel of Death. Yeah, I, mean, I could have definitely, I, I, I could sub out one of them for War Ensemble and uh, Chemical Warfare. I think both, I, both of those I, I enjoy hearing live. They're they're great. I wish I heard them live. Yeah, they're like, great. Uh, wait, how do you not like hmm? Ditto Head? How do you not like Ditto Head? I mean, I just. I, li- I had Divine Intervention, and I listened to it once, and I can really understand why a lot of people didn't like it. It actually bored me uh, for some parts. Like, actually, Divine Intervention is my favorite song off that, because Tom Araya just screams his head off in that song. Like, um, I feel his throat unraveling. <laughs> so, do you have any idea what's now going to become a Slayer? Are they going to replace Jeff Hanneman, or is yeah. the band just going to break up? Well, as I uh, said in my column, like I have no idea what's going to happen. Like the things I want, I would like to happen is them do one album as a one-off, as a tribute to Jeff Hanneman, as a goodbye, and then they can they can do whatever. They can go touring. They can go nostalgia, whatever. I just I don't feel right with them doing anything more than a goodbye album because Jeff Hanneman, you know, huge huge part of him. Like if they could keep Gary Holt for one more album, that'd be fine. But he's not Jeff Hanneman. He is. Ex- he's Gary Holt. He's Exodus. He's not, you know, he's not Slayer. I feel like, kind of like some people, like, let's say Dave Mustaine died. I wouldn't want more, any more Megadeth. Uh, you know, Charlie, Scotty, you know, Frankie Bello, none of them. If they died, you can't do Anthrax. You can't do Metallica without any four of those guys. You can't do Jeff Hanneman without Slayer, in my opinion. I really don't feel like you could. So if they do a touring circuit, which, I mean, hell, it's Tom, Tom, and uh, Carrie pretty much are the only, oh, pretty much the two man band right now. You've got John Deet doing uh he's doing the Australian tour for drums, and I think Gary Holt's doing guitars. But otherwise, I really think they should hang it up because I've heard rumors of uh, Tom's been wanting to hang it up once he hits fifty. So that's pretty <laughs> soon. This is so weird to think about. All right, um, and 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 even sadder news. Uh, I don't. I don't know. If this is sad. This is stupid. Well, I mean, I'm a big fan of Austrian Death Machine. I'm not as big a fan of, of As I Lay Dying. Yeah. So I, I have been hoping that, much like when I used to hope that I was going to get to see me first in the Gimme Gimme's live, which you know, which was an amalgamation of different punk bands, I, I was hoping that at some point I would get to see Austrian Death Machine live. Well. <laughs> Tim Lambassus of As I Lay Dying and Austrian Death Machine got himself into a heap of trouble uh, last oh, week. Oh, yeah. He it's apparently... A load of crap. Yeah. He apparently solicited a, an undercover detective to go and murder his wife. <laughs> and, yeah. And uh, then sure now, he's now, right? that, and now he's pleading innocence that he was set up. Take it, yeah. Robert. Oh, oh, it is so great. Okay, so basically... Well, shortest I can make the long story. He wanted to kill his. He wanted his wife gone. Apparently, like they had broken up in September. After like August, he sent her a, a message. Not even a phone call. A message saying, "I don't love you anymore. I don't believe in God." Blah blah blah. So, you know, they they've had a rocky time, and they have three kids that are adopted from Ethiopia, and that's a big old mess. So I guess he's tired of some shit. And he wants dead. 
So he had been talking about, like, oh, yeah, you know, I'd really like to see her gone. And then he solicits a guy from his gym. Yeah, he didn't even background check the dumb, the, the bastard. He's like, oh, guy from the gym, hey, uh, you know, let's meet up at this place later, so sometime later. They met up. He gave the address, the key, the uh, the address, name, picture, gate codes, all that. And he's like, well, if, when, if you do it, make sure you do it when I have my kids so I have an alibi. So, you know, that hits the fan, and then the feds are like, ha, ha, screw you, and then throws him in jail. It's a pretty much shut. It's closed-door case. I don't really see any way he could be set up. But his lawyers look, it was obviously a setup because her brother is a chair. Uh, he's a deputy in the San Diego uh, Sheriff's Department, so obviously it was a setup, and this is her way of getting revenge on him. I'm like, oh, shut up. No, it's not. He's, I'm pretty sure he's guilty. Like, I don't like calling people guilty after what happened to uh, Randy Blythe and me like, writing a thousand-word essay on, you know, why I think he should have been cooler in his situation and how he should be in jail for a little while. <laughs> yeah, that, w- that was wonderful, especially after he sat in jail for a month. And I'm like, okay, guys, he served his punishment. You can let him go. <laughs> and they didn't <laughs> let him go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would yeah. I would assume uh, – I, 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 here's what I would assume. I, I think he's going to end up copying a deal. Like, like he'll probably do – Whatever the minimum is, and then lots of probation. And if he yeah, and, and if he ever gets his tra- his probation transferred to Polk County, Florida, then he'll uh, violate his probation almost instantaneously because that's what you do. Yeah, like originally his bail was like twenty. Like they wouldn't give him bail, and then they're like, "Well, what about bail? Like twenty million. I'll tell you what he's. Uh, I'll tell you what's gonna happen is he's gonna lose custody of his kids. Oh yeah, especially after that. I mean, you it's kind of hard to dodge that. Which is <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard. To I don't like, know, how, oh, you yeah, write, you know I don't how, how you write a reunification plan on that one. All right, <laughs> you need to go to therapy to talk about why you, you want to kill your wife. Eh? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then you, then you get the kids back, right? right yeah, yeah, it totally works like that. Yeah, All his right. bail is now three million dollars. <laughs> that that. Yeah, I don't have enough pinkies to even do that, the Dr. Evil style. Yeah, three million, and I thought that was actually kind of like kind of funny. Uh, when they were asking if he's a flight risk, <laughs> they took his passport and everything, but like the whole band of Azalea dying was there to support him, and then like there were shit tons of fans. <laughs> so it's like a room full of people like, no, he's good, he's good. We'll make sure he doesn't leave. <laughs> All right. So you know when when there's news that breaks and we happen to be doing this podcast, we'll talk about it. But uh, that 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 does that yeah. for now. Ugh. All right. So yeah. Let's well, talk. And he tried to pay the guy a thousand dollars. I just remembered that. That was the best part. Yeah, sure. He's just been, he's all right. Um, Keep that. So Finn Troll is one of the many 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 uh, folk metal bands. And now we normally don't do the, you know, we when, when we've done shows in the past we've pretty much um done some you know th- straight thrash straight metal talked a little bit about the history of the bands but we don't really need to go into the history of the genre because it's pretty self-explanatory but anytime i've ever told people even people that listen to metal um i listen to folk metal they're like what the hell is that so uh, i'm going to do a little bit of a history lesson here and just kind of get you all up to speed if you've never uh, heard a folk metal before, and you decided to listen to this podcast just to see what me and Robert were up to. Um, get 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 ready for your education. So, uh-huh. folk metal is a subgenre of heavy metal music that was developed in Europe in the 1990s. It's a fusion of heavy metal and traditional folk music. This includes the widespread use of folk instruments and, to a lesser extent, traditional singing styles. Uh, the earliest example of folk metal was the English band Golgotha. Uh, who is, who's a 1984 EP Dangerous Games contained a mixture of new wave British heavy metal and folk styles. The genre was not further developed, however, until the emergence of another English band, Skyclad. Yep. Which, if you haven't checked out Skyclad, you really should. They're pretty amazing. Yeah, they're awesome. Their debut album, The Wayward Sons of Mother Earth, was released in 1990. It was not until 94 and 95 that other early contributors in the genre began to emerge from different regions of Europe as well as in Israel. Among these early groups, the Irish band Krubishan, who are awesome, by the way, and the German band Subway to Sally, who I've never heard of, each spearheaded, of yeah, each spearheaded a different regional variation that over time became known as Celtic metal and medieval metal, respectively. Uh, their, despite their contributions, folk metal remained little known with few representatives during the 1990s. It was not until 
early 2000s when the genre exploded into prominence, particularly in Finland, which is why oftentimes it's called Finnish uh, uh, Finnish folk metal, with the efforts of such groups as Finn Troll and Spiram, who are awesome, Corpa Klani, beer, beer, tourism. Yes, beer, beer, beer. That is all they sing about. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and that's all they need to. Uh, Tourist, exactly. who is also who also falls into the category of battle metal, uh, uh, and battle probably, metal. Also, also fantastic. Uh, the, awesome. uh, yeah, the occur- the according the, the most recent accordion player in Tourist is a hot little number, by the way. And oh, really, and, I've not seen her. Oh uh, yeah, I've seen Tourist a few times live, and she's uh, she's quite the cute, she's quite the quite the cutie, the hottie patati. The music of <laughs> folk metal. The music of folk metal is character, characterized by its diversity with bands known to perform different styles of both heavy metal music and folk music. A large variety of folk instruments are used in the genre with many bands, consequently featuring six or more members in the regular lineup. So you've got, you know, um, people who play wind instruments, people who play the accordion, etc. A uh, few bands are known to rely on keyboards to simulate the sound of folk instruments. Lyrics in the genre commonly, commonly deal with fantasy, mythology, paganism, history, and nature, and of course, beer. Um, beer. Beer, beer. I won't be for beer. I can keep talking. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I, I got song. I got to know folk metal actually through Fin Troll. That was the uh, the first band that I'd ever heard, and I and uh, I heard of uh, Fin Troll. I guess it had to have been um, in what year was that? Uh, that had to have been two thousand four, two thousand five, because. Um, that was after Troll Hammerin' the EP came out, and then uh, the album that it ended up being on Netford uh, also came out in 2004. And I had a buddy who was working for Caroline Records at the time, and he used to get me just tons of, of uh, promos. So he's the one that got me into bands as you know, as far as soil work, um, in Flames, Children of Bodom, to Blind Guardian, Stradivarius, um, all the way to Fin Troll. And I heard this, and I heard Troll Hammerin the first time, and I thought that was the most, both the most awesome and hilarious song I'd ever heard. Um, <laughs> and I was hooked ever since, and that's and and that became that that beget my entire love of the genre. So a lot of the time, to- a lot of times now, what I'll end up listening to when I'm not listening to Hatebreed, apparently, you know, I listen to a lot of the uh, the folk metal, battle metal type of stuff. I really, I, it's just so different than really anything else that's out there. Um, it's metal without sounding angry, and I enjoy the implementation of humpa, which is traditional um, uh, polka music, Finnish polka music. I like those rhythm in, in, mixed in with the heavy metal. So, Robert, how did you how did you come to folk metal and uh, fin troll in particular? Ah, well, fin troll, I'll get to that one soon. But actually, folk metal, oddly enough, it was not through any European band or like really any main European band. Like Dan Haggerty's old uh, Bosch Pit column on four one one. Love that column. I, I wish it would have stayed. But yeah, uh, like Dan, he went through every year from seventy, and he made it all the way to ninety eight. He would cover like all like the main events of the uh, year, and then he'd cover like the best metal albums. So he came to '95, I think, and he started talking about Orphan Land, which I think I'm sure I've talked to you about them before. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I adore them. They are Israeli folk, like folk metal with some death metal and doomy stuff thrown inside. They were actually my first, like the first real folk metal band I fell in love with. Still love them. They have a new album coming out this uh, this uh, summer. Really excited. Yeah, they unlike a lot of the, a lot of folk metal bands, they use um Middle Eastern folk, which you know, fitting since they're from Israel. They use a lot of uh, Middle Eastern folk sound to it and a lot of chanting and it really worked with what they were doing. Like folk metal was something I really wish like would I don't want to say become more prominent because it's prominent and the problem with a lot of folk music metal is a lot of it's derivative. So Sometimes if you heard one Corbicani song, you've heard all of them. No. No. No, people, no you have some, not. Some, no, some people say that. I don't. So some people are uh, deaf. Yeah, but some people find a lot of it derivative. Kind of like how a lot of Death Doom bands, it's kind of, Death Doom is really 
kind of fallen to the wayside a little bit because, like, there's so many bands doing that now. It's kind of hard to stand out. And folk metal is something that I feel, well, even if it did have the exposure of, like, a death doom metal band where everybody's doing it, there are so many different styles. Like, heck, last year I got into Waylander, who are a Celtic metal band, who are awesome. Totally. I love Waylander. Them, uh, Skyclad's pretty cool. Ar- Arcona do kind of a Celtic style, but they're from Russia. Let's see, uh, Inciferum, I got through the, into them through uh, stuff like Central and Corpacani. Uh, you ever you like Inciferum, don't you? Yes, I do. Good, 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 good. Inciferum's good. Uh, Orphan Land do a, a little a nice style, different from a lot of the other uh, bands. I even found a, ch- a band that used Chinese folk music. They're called Chandran. They're from, uh, actually, it's just one guy. He's from New Zealand, and he had a song called Monkey King that I heard one morning. Well, because I put on metal while I sleep, because, you know, I'm so metal, I sleep to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I woke up, and I was like, whoa, this is really cool, really fast, heavy stuff with Chinese instruments. And it's really interesting, because folk music is something that it is so, t- like, it is really timeless. Like, it goes back so long, and when you mix that with metal, it really helps put an identifier on usually where you are. Like a lot of it's like there's some bands that are not from the place where, that they use the folk music from, but they still do it. But, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, I've heard some, I don't think I've heard, have we, is there any Native American folk metal? I don't know. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention about Finn Troll was that despite the fact that they're from Helsinki, Finland, they sing in Swedish. And they sing in Swedish because the um, first singer was part of the Swedish speaking minority in Finland. So when you now as it is you can't understand most of what uh, they're saying in death metal music. But but um it it makes it especially interesting when all of the songs are performed in Swedish uh and they're growling. So it, yeah, it's, you, you, it's even so, harder so as a listener you as a listener you really do then have to focus on the musicianship and uh, the, you know, the background music and not necessarily the vocals, which just real quick, uh, I took my friend to go see this past weekend. He's never been to a concert before in his life. Never, 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 ever. Oh, okay? I remember this guy. Oh, God. You, isn't this the one you took to see Three Inches of Blood? Yes. I took him to go see Three Inches of Blood and Goat Whore Friday night. Oh, and then we, you, oh that is amazing. Yeah, and then, a good friend. I am a good friend. And then uh, Saturday night, we t- I took him and his girlfriend and my wife to go see Clutch. Uh, which was a whole other experience. But we, we got into a discussion after the show about, uh, you know, he was like, I, I don't understand why you like goat whore. And I was like, how could you well, not like goat whore? Well, hang on. Well, let me get there. So he was like, I don't understand how you, how you like goat whore. And I'm like, well, why? Because I can't understand a word he's saying. Can you? I'm like, well, for the most part, no. But I don't care. I don't really care what he's saying. Um, I like the way it sounds. And it was funny because as I heard myself say that, I should have followed it with, and I'm just a girl. What do I know? Um, But it's true. (laughs) A a lot of metal, a lot of especially like death, black, doom, uh, folk metal is completely unintelligible. But I don't care because I I like the music. I don't necessarily care about the lyrics. And I don't mind the I, – I, I kind of count the growling as an instrument in and of itself, not necessarily because I'm interested in the lyrical content. But I added this line in there. I said, if I were to base what I – because he had said, well, the only reason I like a song is if I like the lyrics. I mean, it helps if I like everything mm-hmm. else too, but the lyrics are the, the anchor for me. And I said, Paul, if I – listen to music based solely on the lyrics, I would only listen to country music or I wouldn't listen to music at all. I wouldn't listen to music at all. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't do really care about a lot of the, I mean, the, my, we were talking about Slayer before. 90% of what Slayer thinks about is either Satan, war, death. You know? I don't really care yeah. about any of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I I personally think like a lot of bands like I find Cannibal Corpse easy to understand than a lot of those rappers that are speak really fast. Like I posted a dissection song one day, and this guy's like, "Dude, how do you listen to this? I can't understand a word he's saying." I'm like, "Dude, I can understand this better than Twista. I can tell you that. I can understand. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of maybe it's 
because I definitely listen to a lot of this stuff, like I can actually pick up on a lot of it, especially after reading the lyrics, because after reading the lyrics, okay, that's what it was saying. Like I feel like after a while you get kind of attuned to it and you can pick up a lot of stuff better than my mom who who hates anything that's really metal. I think the most right. metal thing she likes is like Evanescence. Moving that, right along. <laughs> We are 30 minutes into this podcast and have not played a lick of music. (laughs) And we have a whole album to go through. Yeah. So for the benefit of those waiting patiently uh, for for, for us to get on with it, uh, Blood's Vet came out on March 22nd, 2013. Um, There are 11 tracks on it. We're going to listen to portions of all 11 tracks, and then you know we'll respond to them. That's how we do this podcast. So uh, get ready. So here's the uh, self-titled track. This is Blood's Vet. So the English translation of uh, Blood's Vept is Shrouded in Blood. We're going to make sure that we say the – I'm going to murderize the Swedish language in trying to pronounce some of these songs, and then I'm going to tell you what the English translation is. So what did you think of uh, Shrouded in Blood? Ooh, that song seems to be get like the intro once we got past that bit of silence. It is the whole reason I love vocal metal because I'm a goofy bastard. I'm pretty sure it's easy to tell because I'm on a podcast. <laughs> there aren't many really boring people on podcasts. Uh, Robert, you are positively uh, buttoned up and conservative on this podcast compared to <laughs> your wild and crazy self on the Three Beards. I was like, wow, why do why don't I get fun Robert? I, I get like super serious metal Robert. And then you go on the three three bid and it's rock out with your cock out time. My goodness. Well, I guess it's because I feel like I, <laughs> because I feel like I should respect you. <laughs> and we have four one one mania's name to uphold. <laughs> I don't know. I did, I did really notice that. I'm like, when I do three beers, I'm like, you know, I never really act like this on Mark's podcast. Well, I'm like probably it, shitting a brick right now. I was, I, I was like, like we get over like, well, I like metal, and here's the thing. And then you go over to three beers, you're just like, hey, see my titties? I mean, like, what the hell, <laughs> Fletcher, man? Reading Fletcher's mom in titties. <laughs> and she yeah. still ended up hating me after uh, necrophilia jokes. <laughs> I still laugh pretty hard at but let, 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 let's get back to this. Drowned in blood. Yeah. I, yes, yes. My, oh, my I never, first, I never got to finish. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, yes. Go, go, I'm sorry, Super Serious Robert. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just saying, I'm a really goofy bastard, and I like to dance along to things, but I have a reputation to uphold, so folk metal really helps uh, fit that niche of me dancing along, but it's still metal. <laughs> like, yeah. this, this was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun with the song. I, I, all I could think about was, um, and this is, I don't know if people watch the show Bob's Burgers, but I my first... The first thing it was it was kind of a um, 
a stream of consciousness kind of thing. Like, like, oh, this song just makes me want to get up and shake my tushy. You know, just just get up there and shake it. You know what I mean? Just just dance around it like, yay, na 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 na. And then it's just a, just a free and happy and dancey song. And then all I could think about was the mother from Bob's Burger going, "Drop your pants, pick them back up." If you, can, if you, you know, can. I gave that. I watched the first episode and hated it, but uh, then I've been it told it's got really good. Like, yeah, I was gonna say it grows on you after a while because I absolutely yeah. hate it too. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is fucking awful. Yeah, I used to. Like, I, I used to because I when I used to uh, DVR all of the the Simpsons and the two Seth MacFarlane shows, and then I oh, would. Oh God! And then you I would watch Alan Gregory. But I ended up watching a couple episodes of Bob's Burgers, and I'm just waiting for the Family Guy to start. And I was like, this is actually not not that bad. And then it grew on me, and now I've become a fan of the show. But yeah, this this this, this whole song, this it it may be called shrouded in blood is the translation, but as far as I'm concerned, it's drop your pants, pick them back up. <laughs> it's shrouded in fun. <laughs> <laughs> fun step. That's right. Um, yeah, I, it was... it, this reminds me of like, and a lot of this album um, does it, it. The Red Triangle game from Batman, Re, Batman Returns. If they need a theme, this should be it. Fin, if someone ever reboots just Batman Returns or somehow implements the Red Triangle gang into another Batman movie, Fintroll needs to provide them a theme. That'd be great. As long as it's not the insane clown posse. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Who's going right. chicken hunting? Um, yeah, I think... <laughs> Magnets, how the fuck do they work? <laughs> this just... This is the sound of a circus gone off the rails. That That's really all... That's what I get from a lot of this album is... Especially songs like that one. Um, and yeah. there's a few of them scattered throughout this... Throughout this record. Yeah, that, but, it's Mary Garongo, die, die. <laughs> yeah, it's. I I, I thought of it's very a lot of this album reminds me of a high school marching band marching directly into traffic. Mm, well, well, no, actually, I've done the opposite. I'm like, well, I was a high school marching band. I'm like, actually, we marched with traffic. That's called a parade. <laughs> <laughs> no, this this feels like they walked. They they just marched into a street and cars are driving off the road. So it's you know. <laughs> So they're playing marching band music, but cars are screeching and crashing around them. That's what this feels like to me. I could see it. I could, uh, I could see more bands that play doing that. was great. Like a hundred-person <laughs> band all running into traffic. Woo! All right. So let's go on to uh, Et Folk for a Bonnet. Okay, folks, I don't know Swedish. I, I'm now now trying to pronounce these songs with like a, like a Spanish accent because I don't know how else to do this. Um, yeah, it's for Kvarbana, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I go Russian because that's as close as I can do. <laughs> Perfect. I'll do it. I'll do it. A Hispanic accent. You do a Russian accent, and we'll piss off everybody. Fantastic. <laughs> because of, it's because of GTA Four. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Nico Cousins. You want to go bowling? <laughs> uh, or we could do, you know, or we could do like a James Bond villain. You know, oh <laughs> no, I, I want you to die. die. <laughs> I expect you to die, Mr. Bond. Yeah. Speaking of dying, this is uh, <laughs> a cursed people uh, as opposed to a cursed podcast. so strong and then the second track i don't know i'm not you know like I, let me let me be clear because we're i think it's okay to criticize something even if you like it and and i would 
tell you before we even get to the end of this podcast, I really like this album. It's it's definitely up there with one of my favorites of the year. It's no hate breed, but you know, it's still <laughs> that, is, that is all you listen to. Hey, your influence is rubbed off on me. I saw a hate breed shirt in a thrift store and it was like extra large. I'm like, that's my size. It's four dollars. Well, I guess it'd be good to mow the yard in. <laughs> <laughs> Time to mow it. Um anyway. So it's time to mow the grass. <laughs> podcast is being is getting silly. Um, we're going into beards territory. Oh God! If you start talking about blue waffles, I quit. Oh, okay. hey, you get it You're on it tomorrow. Just wait. <laughs> I actually was listening to that part of the podcast while I was at work. I was. <laughs> Why? I'm, I'm in I'm in an office. I, I don't want to get too many give too many details about this, but I I work in a jail and there's offices scattered throughout the jail so that you so that the medical staff can do examinations close to wherever the dorm is. And um I went to what we I, what we call trustees. And trustees are people who work in the who are serving a sentence um, or are waiting to be tried for uh, for a crime, but in the meantime, have there are such low level offenders that they can uh, they can work in the jail and work off some of their time. So those people are called trustees. And I was in the trustee dorm, and the officer told me, "Can you just wait a few minutes so that we can get the trustees from wherever they are? And we have to feed right now, so just chill out in the office for a minute." So I'm in the office next to the trustee dorm, and I'm like, well, I've got nothing else to do, so I'm going to listen to the rest of the Three Beards podcast. And that's when you guys start going into the blue waffle. And it never occurs to me, I should probably turn this off, let somebody else hear it, and now I get accused of, uh, of uh, you know, some sort of misconduct. Oh, this you were listening to it out loud? Yes. Oh, man. Oh, that is poor. That is poor judgment. Then again, you listen to the podcast in the first place. That's bad enough. <laughs> but um, oh, anyway, back to the uh, accursed people. What did you think of this song? I kind of felt like it should be the intro to AFB. It had that feeling to me. Like I don't know why I felt like it should have been the the intro to a '90s clip show, but damn it, it did. Like, I still kind of liked it. Like, there's not many songs on this album that I can always find much fault because it is so much damn fun. But yeah, this was one of the weaker tracks. Oh, that's funny. It's a good thing my Twitter is still up. Pat Healy tested positive for marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Got, Poor yeah, what Bam a, Bam. What a dumbass. Uh, uh, um, I don't know. Uh, where's Jeff Harrison when we need him? Uh, we don't know. In in the troll cave. <laughs> I uh, I will now have something to talk about on Sunday. Mostly yeah. my complete disappointment in Bam Bam. Well, uh, we should get him and we should get Harris and Sammer to do Megadeth with us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Can you imagine how badly that would go? I was gonna say I don't see that ending. You, look, when I did the Clutch podcast, I was very protective of it. I wanted to make sure that it went off well. I don't know why. You've been haunting me to do Megadeth, and then you would have those two on at the same time and expect it to go well. As my as my drama teacher in high school said, don't take a shit all over your play. No, I'm just like, just knowing how they interact on the super secret writer's form is bad enough. Christ. I'm yeah, just imagining, I, like, even something is just neutral as music I can see going really badly. No, no, no. I like Jeff one on one. I like Samer uh in in the confines that we've had him in Long Road to Ruin. I, I don't I, I, I wanna play another song. That's what I wanna do.
track number three, When Giants March, Narjatar Marshera. I'm just going to say it like an overly nerdy white person. Narjatar Marshera. I, I, I don't know. To the Swedish people out there, I am going to apologize now and throughout the entire podcast. Yeah, I don't I don't know how to pronounce that type of a. See, I'm really I'm actually quite good at pronouncing foreign languages. Like I managed to sound like I can do a little Japanese for some reason. I have no clue how to touch anything close to like anything that's has weird letters like Russian or Swedish or anything like that. Like Spanish, I'm damn good at pronouncing Spanish. Nope, <laughs> I can't touch this. So not only do I like music that I can't understand, I also like music that I can't pronounce. Oh, exactly. I mean, heck, maybe, maybe you'll pick up a little. The more you listen, just look up some lyrics, and, you know, you'll figure it out. You're good. Yeah. But yeah, th- 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 this song, I like the song. It was like most of the songs on this, they're fun. Like, there's not many folk metal song- tunes that I'm like, this is boring. So I got a Waylander album that's, like, uber rare, but it is boring because there's not much folk metal in it. It's like mid it's like mid pace stuff with like a really weak sounding tin whistle. Ugh, hate that happens. This one was a little all over the place for me. I mean, it has parts where I'm just like, eh, like that that beginning almost sounds like a Pantera song, and then and, you know, and then it picks up a little bit, and then it gets to something that sounds a little more folk metally. But um, I mean, it's better than track two. But when I want when I listen to Look, I want everything to sound like Troll Hammering. That's where I'm going with this. I love You want Troll everything? Hammering. Everything. Like every band, like if Clutch, all they played was Troll Hammering, you'd just be like, okay. Yeah, because if, if Clutch played it, it would be even that much more awesome. This is true. This is true. What if, <laughs> tried, what if Mike Patton did a smooth jazz version? <laughs> of Troll Hammering? We'd be doing a podcast on that. This is true. We'd, get, we'd call up Kevin and everything, and then he wouldn't be able to answer. <laughs> But um, yeah. yeah, I just uh, uh, it, when I what I was getting to without being silly was when I listen to folk metal. Um, part of the reason why I enjoy Corpaclani so much is because half of their songs are asinine. Now th- I think <laughs> they actually sing in English, and um, no, some of it in actually, English, not all of it. Some of it is the guy. What I've read, his uh, English is so awful. That's why they do most of it in uh, like Swedish or uh, no, it's not Swedish usually. It's uh. Finish. Yeah, the their guys last album I think was so all in Finnish. I was gonna say their last yeah, album yeah. was all in Finnish, but they, their earlier stuff, um, it's very awkward English. I, I think oh, I've got the whatever the one where they're running through the trees. I, I'll, I'll look it up and I'll. But uh, one of their very earlier albums. Vodka? No, Maybe. even before, like before that, way before that. Um, like Call of the Wilder, Call of the Wild or Wilderness. I, I, oh, yeah, I got like one of their first albums. Yeah, it's very. It's like. You know, it's it's that Family Guy joke where the two Swedish guys are talking and they're mangling the English language. I go, okay, friend. You know, and it's <laughs> it's just, it's like English. It's like yeah. Japanese people with English. It's English. It's like <laughs> it's Fingrish. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just like somebody's interpretation of English. Um, as yeah. the, as a couple couple of albums later, once they get into um some of the like beer beer and happy little boozer and, and those songs. By the way, did I ever tell you that um. My uh, wedding party all walked into beer, beer, with. with oh, you are my hero. <laughs> with um, what are the German glasses called? Um, oh, uh, I don't do, I don't drink. Uh, shit. Stein. Stein. Uh, Stein. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, with Steins of. Yeah, I had my entire wedding party come into the reception with Steins of beer to beer, beer. Oh, uh, oh, this is oh, so amazing. Like all these ideas are coming through my head. Like I wish I would have thought of that. <laughs> yep. It was oh, one well. of the things my wife let me do. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> but uh, the the point here is, you know that that's what I like in 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 folk metal. You know I like because you listen to so much, uh, you know, dark and you know we we did the Testament album and we both really liked it. But it was just, it was just some angry shit there. Like I want yeah. I want happy I want that sound of a circus gone mad. You know I like Sorry. that sort of sound and I found myself really wanting that in this album and getting it in certain parts, but not throughout the whole thing. And, the may, and maybe there's an argument there for you know variety is the spice of life and it's a good I can thing. Make that, I can make that argument. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, hold on. Okay, there we go. 
Yeah, now honestly, I kind of like it when, like, I like that this album had different passages. Like, there's a few songs that feel kind of doomier than others. There's some that feel more like straight death metal. But sometimes, like, there's another problem I've heard people have, like, like Corporate Colony and stuff like that, that if you just play, it's kind of like some, like, thrash bands. If all they do is just see who can play faster, it gets kind of boring. Sure. I think if the circus is sometimes saved for parts when I need it, it'll have better impact. You'll like the song more, you're like, hey, I really missed this. This is cool. Rather than, oh, another song with a circus. I can't see how this is different, which is, which I've actually got the, uh, this is just random tangent, but it actually fits. Like, I got the X Factor by Iron, Iron Maiden a few weeks ago because it was a dollar at a pawn shop. Can't beat that. Yeah. You know, it was a dollar at a pawn shop, so I listened to it, and I'm like, you know, I like this album. I really do. I'm one of the few people that do. But the uh, complaint that I hear from a lot of people about the Blaze Bailey era of Iron Maiden was it was Steve Harris's, like, Dark Park project. There were too many songs that had really silent intros and too many silent, part, like, really quiet parts. And it made it to where a lot of the songs didn't have much impact because you didn't really know when to feel, you didn't know when to feel, like, excited, kind of like, with too much folk metal, you don't know when, <laughs> you can't really tell when you're supposed to be, I don't know, kind of excited for the folk music, because you're like, well, it's here the whole time. Sometimes variety is the spice of life. Like, I love macaroni and cheese, but I can't eat macaroni and cheese every day for the rest of my life, because I'll probably kill somebody with a spoon. You'll die long before that ever happens, eating macaroni and cheese every day. <laughs> my leg! <laughs> yeah, I'll lose a leg because of macaroni and cheese consumption. <laughs> I'll turn into a giant noodle. <laughs> All right, this next one, Mordminen. Um, okay, now I'm going to do everything like I'm do like I'm um, I'm in Lord of the Rings. Mordminen, uh, which is memories of Moida. <laughs> That's an interesting song because it uh, it's got all the elements to folk of folk metal that I like. You know, I like that swing. Um, you know, that actually that that reminded me of the um, the jizz band from it, it, that. That's actually what they call it. I'm not even joking about that. It, the the musical style that um, the most Eisley band plays in Star War in Star Wars: A New Hope. It instead of jazz, Lucas named it jizz. Where to blue hell? That's true, but it uh, reminds me. <laughs> you should have saved this for the three beards. It's right <laughs> my wheelhouse. <laughs> well, you can bring it back up again tomorrow. Um, um, <laughs> we but, will. Uh, <laughs> but it reminds me of the jizz band um, from <laughs> from Star Wars: <laughs> A New Hope. You know, it's got that swing to it. It's got that kind of a jazzy feel. Um, but you know, but there, there's still enough uh, with you know with the growling and the vocalizations and all that. You know, it's still you're still firmly in the tr in the uh, folk metal genre, but it's it's still different and it's and it's fun. Um, you know, it, we're we're back to fun again with this with this particular track. Oh yeah, yeah, I loved it. I thought it was a lot of. I thought it did have a lot of fun to it. Like just listening to it through the through the phone here, I'm just sitting there like, yeah, I kind of want to start to dance with people. You know, that, that's the thing. Like, I think the measure of a good song, and again, this is going to make me sound like a girl. I'm just a girl. Look at me. Um, is, you know, if it makes you want to get up and dance, it's a good song. End of discussion. Yeah. Oh, boy. Pat Healy has been suspended 90 days, and his win is now a no contest. 
just fucking kill me. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I know. Let's let's add fun with Pat Healy's drug test. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, this like I, I agree. Like to to a certain extent. Now sometimes like I'm not much of the thrashing, moshing type, but. I feel like with a lot of heavier songs, that that, that is dancing. It makes you want to get up and punch like the person next to you. It's good. That's what Disciple makes me want to do by Slayer. That and like War Ensemble, it makes me want to come and like beat my hand, my wall in with a hammer. A hey, small correction. Um, they're known as Jizz Whalers. <laughs> jizz Whalers. I'll come right at it now. Uh, they actually refer to um, it's the band from Return of the Jedi, uh, the Max Rebo Band, which this is even better, by the way. The Max Rebo Band from uh, Return of the Jedi in Jabba's Palace consists consists of Ortolan, who is the keyboardist, Max Rebo. Oh, sorry, that, that that's his race. Max Rebo is an Ortolan. Um, Droopy McCool. And Snot and Cy Snoodles. We all know who Cy Snoodles is, but apparently the other the other person in the band is Droopy McCool. This sounds like a black metal band made of old people. <laughs> um, Doesn't it? <laughs> but they are uh, they are in, the style of music that they play is in fact uh, they are they are in fact jizz whalers. Jizz whalers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have to keep we have to bring that one back up tomorrow night. <laughs> oh. Don't you love how we went from like excited discussion about music to Pat Healy to Jizz Whaling? You keep bringing up and Pat now, Healy. I don't want to talk about that. You, you, oh, you'll have to. Well, on Sunday I will, but now it's just depressing. Yeah, it is kind of sad. And poor Jim Miller. I should call in. Oh yeah, I should call into that show sometime. I really should. Sure, why not? This is a, it's like every time nine o'clock rolls around, I'm like, "Isn't there something I should be listening to?" Now let's move more. Sure. All right. Uh, moving right along, put loose and fancy free uh, is track number five, which is called uh, "Rosette Gong," um, and uh, the English translation is "The King of Cairn," which is uh, very different from "The King of Pain." You know that one had more of a battle metal. That one had more of yeah. a battle metal uh, feel to it. That one was straight out of the uh, out of Turris's wheelhouse. Yeah, that definitely felt more of something that was medieval. That was more medieval, more Renaissance fair, just more Renaissance fair, fair. You know, more things you find there rather than running through a forest, beer, beer. I'm in a circus. Yeah, I definitely like. I liked how that was a little different, though. And then they kind of took a different approach to it. Like, there was still kind of, like, you had that renaissance feel, and then they kind of sort of quieted it down a little for you, and then they brought it back up. It's neat. I like it. The, um, the band that I was referring to before, the Cantina Band, 
Uh, <laughs> I, I, I needed to close this out. The name of the band is called Finger and Dan and the Modal Nodes. <laughs> God, what was what were those writers smoking? <laughs> I don't know, but I didn't even know. And I'm like a huge Star Wars geek, and I've read a bunch of the books. I've read the book that actually talks about the the Cantina Band's backstory. But, what? Um, Why? Because <laughs> I read a bunch of Star Wars books, you know, before nine eleven. Um, in any case, I didn't realize nine eleven. What? Oh, well, before nine eleven, I read a lot of fiction. It was mostly Star Wars fiction. After nine eleven, I stopped reading fiction for a while. Oh, um, okay. I was wondering. I'm like, I was like, what? Did they take them all off the shelves? <laughs> <laughs> so so you're like, like oh, let me go to the library. They're gone. <laughs> Now, if you read uh, the book Tales from the Most Isley's Cantina, there's a there's a there's a short story about um, the Cantina Band, and I didn't either. I had forgotten, or didn't, or they're not referred to it in, in that book. But um, yeah, apparently in the Star Wars expanded universe, the band that plays in the Cantina in A New Hope is Finger and Dan and the Modal Nodes. I see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I haven't read nearly as many uh, Star Wars books as my good, ever-loving best friend, Nick. But, like, the one I have read, if you have any interest in Star Wars, you ever heard of the Darth Bane trilogy? Uh, I mean, I've seen it in bookstores. I've never read it. Yeah, it's it's really good. I I would recommend it. It's I dig it. It's how they came up with, like, his that series is how they came up with the whole, like, there can only be two Sith thing. You know, how there's only two Sith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, yeah, the mask, like, basically his thing was, like, you know, there needs to be one person to hold the power and then somebody else to attain it, because if there's any more, anyone else, everybody's just going to screw each other over. Yeah, that's actually been referenced in other stuff that I have read. But, all right, let's it move is. on to track six here <laughs> and, and put the Star Wars discussion to bed. For it's now. really funny. I, I would look up, what the Corporal Clowney album that I was referring to never bothered because I was so busy trying to figure out who the Jizz Whalers were. <laughs> Jizz Whaler. All right. If this were, if this if this were the three beard, they go hello, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get serious for a moment. Okay. Um, this, this next track, track six, Govlaren's Dood is Death of the Waster. rather nicely into I think the horror genre. The other thing it made me think of was my kid watches a show called Sophia the First and one of the shows she meets the trolls who live under the castle. I'm going to ask four chan. <laughs> <laughs> Finger and Dan. Um <laughs> No, no, no. Now keep in mind this is a Disney television show meant for very very young children, so let's not be too cruel and um judgmental. But uh, I would so never. <laughs> yeah, Sophia um, get uh, gets lost and she ends up going into a cave underneath the castle and she meets the trolls that have been banished there and um, they take out their clubs and they start banging on the ground and they t- they tell her that this to them is music. So uh, and then they they break into a song called "Make Some Noise" and it's just a lot of rhythmic drumming and that's kind of how that's kind of what this reminded me of at least from the start and then as, as the song breaks. You know, um, <clears throat> there's some of that horror sort of piano element to it, and it just it had a very marching quality. 
I agree. Now, now if the uh, trolls would have started playing Skrillex, I would have thrown something through the TV and like go, go to your room. <laughs> Tell the TV to go to its room. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, no, I really like. I, at first, I didn't like this song that much. Then after playing it, you know, before the show, and then like you know when we just played it through now, like I really kind of felt that it gave off a death clock vibe. <laughs> As weird as that is, this sounds like something that would come from a Death Clock album. No, I totally really hear it. I totally because there because a lot of their songs, um, I, or I I just had one like not necessarily Thunder Horse because I think that one's a little bit faster. But there's definitely a couple of songs like March. There's like Marching to Death songs. They've done a bunch of them, and that is exactly yeah. now that you mention it, that is exactly what that reminds me of. Bir- birthday Death Day. Yeah, that's what it reminded me of. <laughs> Yeah, it had that really kind of impending, like, horror coming on you. Like, I, it is a really, you know, I love Doomy stuff, but I thought it was a really nice, like, it was a nice departure from even what we've had before. Like, we haven't had as much uh, of the circusy, folky stuff, which after looking through the songs that I starred on Spotify, those are the ones I like the most, were the folky ones. But, like, even that, like, the medieval feeling stuff, this is a total departure. It's it, It's refreshing. It's, I don't like it as much as some of the other songs, but I still found that it was it, it was a nice departure. It was something that was again mixing it up. It was uh, you know it was the spice of life, right? Spice of life, indeed. All right. Um, I know that just re-listening to the album again today in preparation for the podcast, I I, rem- I was finding that I was liking a lot of songs towards the end of it. Um, I think some I think the next two or three songs ended up being really really good. So let's go ahead and uh, listen to them. Uh, this first one is uh, Skog's Daughter, which, which I believe actually there was a video for. And the English translation is Daughter of the Forest. Daughter of the Forest. Here we go. Yeah, this is usually one of the better songs on the album, as far as I'm concerned. Um, first of all, you know, when they get the, when they start picking up the pace and playing it faster, all I could think of was "Peace Sells." So who's buying that? And oh, you know, <laughs> easy there, Shredenstein. The song is over already. What was that? I, that was my <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't get a "Peace Sells," but you mentioned like that is the "Peace Sells." Okay, everything you just said broke up. I don't know what you I don't know what you're doing or if it's Skype or not, but uh you that that Can you fix it, sir? It's my phone. I don't know what I can do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there you go. Whatever you're doing, stay to whatever you do, stand still and talk. Ooh, that's bad cuz I pace every time I do this podcast. I've been pacing the whole show. <laughs> Uh, this is actually my favorite. So this, 
that go through? No. I I got this is your favorite song on on the whole album and then silence. Well, yeah, because I was waiting for you to be like, okay, I can hear you. Oh, okay. No, no, you're good. Keep going. Go, go. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> go, yeah, go, go. Yeah, this was this was definitely one of my favorites from it. Cause, like the whole Peace Cells thing, I didn't get that until you mentioned it. I'm like, oh, yeah, that is the baseline from Peace Cells. So, like, I really liked how the beginning of it made me want to go play Final Fantasy, which I might go do that anyways. I totally had a World there's... of Warcraft. That's funny you should mention that. I had a World of Warcraft vibe. Like, if you go into um, Storm Drain or Storm Guard or whatever the hell the name of the uh, the human city is, the, the big castle, you know, oh. and, and, you know, I just I get this like celebratory feeling when you know, at the beginning of the song. Yeah, like I was like, oh, it makes me think you're walking to Final Fantasy. I've never played World of Warcraft. I have never done MMOs. I don't have the patience or the time. Actually, <laughs> I have the time. I just don't have the dedication. Like my interests like go from like four different things every two weeks or so. <laughs> World of Warcraft is a vital part of my retirement plan. I've already <laughs> told. I got a good seven years on my wife, which means I'll be able to. Which means there'll be a seven-year period where she has to work and I don't. And oh I'm going to play every one of those days in every one of those seven years playing World of Warcraft while she's at work. You're just gonna like it's gonna be like uh like my dad when he would be on vacation, like my uh his ex ex wife yeah his ex wife <laughs> used to tell me she's like yeah like when he'd be off like I'd leave he'd be uh sitting at the computer. Put a blanket on it over his legs, playing uh, Civilization. When I come back from work, he'd be sitting there, blanket over his legs, playing Civilization. It sounds like my dream. Yeah, I must say that is kind of that is kind of a dream of mine. <laughs> it might be like watching something, playing video games, listening to metal, and then like what rinse wash, whatever the hell. But yeah, yeah, but, yeah it was just uh, I, like that was really video. This felt like a really questy intro, and then when it sped up, I'm like. I kind of want to dance, but I kind of want to hit somebody. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> My do wires both. got crossed. You can do both. Oh. As anyone that saw um, me in the mosh pit at Clutch or at uh, Three Inches of Blood, you can absolutely dance and hit someone at the same time. Uh, see, there's a lot of people that do that, but those are like the screamo kids doing their karate kicks, and you know, like what Brian Posehn calls them for more metal than you. you more metal than you. Uh, karate metal kick, by man. number. You don't yeah, need to do karate. Their- if you do- if you just dance, dance, excuse me. If you just dance aggressively, and you're you're in a confined space with people running around you, you're going to hit somebody regardless without doing karate kicks. Yeah, I love I love uh, metal by numbers, dude. You look gay hard, and, and look out for the giant Mexican guy. He looks really pissed. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I might have mentioned in this podcast before the sick of it all video for Step Down, where they actually yeah. like show you all of the different uh, hard New York hardcore dance moves. So like there's the pizza cutter and pickup change, which another oh, one. Oh, I've friends. seen that. I was like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, no. That's first of all, there's no whatever. That's awesome. Second of all, I my don't. Goal, my goal in life is to get my toddler to do all of those, and like I want to re, I want to do a scene by scene reshoot of that video with my toddler doing all the dance moves. I've never, I've never been much for dancing. Like usually, if I'm in a pit, like it'll be like what happened at my senior prom. I'm sure I've told you that story, haven't I? Perfect. My senior prom, there was a. There was a mosh pit. There's a senior prom. There's, there's a mosh pit at every senior prom. <laughs> Go ahead. No. Oh, no, no, no. Not my senior prom. I live in freaking the middle of rural North Carolina. Or not kind of rural. Kind of sort of city rural. But, like, apparently we were the school where a lot of the rich snobby kids were, and I didn't know that because I'm not a rich snobby kid. Anyways, so, like, my junior prom, it was really boring because the music, music was awful. It's switched between country and pop music. It was just so, so fucking terrible. And then the, uh, Senior, I just welcome them. Hey guys, do you play some metal? They're like, Yeah, man, you want some? Uh, well, what do you want? I'm like, I made some metallic. He goes, All right, so then he on Kill Switch Engage. <laughs> I, have no, I have no clue what's going on. This was like when I was huge, huge in the Kill Switch Engage. Like, nothing could beat them. Like, now I still love them. I actually bought the new album, it was really good. But I was like, You know, nothing could beat them. So I was like, Oh, I was like, Okay, so I'm just like headbanging and everything and air guitaring. But then I did my usual to where I headbanged too much and then like my whole body hurt for like the rest of the night. <laughs> but then later, like a lot of my friends, because apparently me and my date got there early, which is weird because I never get anywhere early, as you can tell by me calling in four minutes before this starts. <laughs> you know, what? Giving, that gives me serious agita every time you do that. You're, like, still talking to me on Facebook, and I'm like, call in. Yeah, well, usually it's because I'm finishing up listening to stuff. <laughs> but yeah, 
Oh yeah, no, I never forget when I have a have a podcast with with you. But uh, yeah, so like later, like my friends are like, dude, we weren't here. Can you go ask him again? I'm like, hey man, uh, can I play something else? He goes, hey, man, you want more medals? Then he throws on some Azalea dying. <laughs> Ironic as to this week. But, yeah, he throws <laughs> it on. I'm um, so I start air guitar again. And then this one dude shoves another dude, and then everybody else, <laughs> everybody, else, all the men on the dance floor just start running into each other and just start swinging. And I just saw like, I'm on the outside, so I'm just running and like shoulder charging everybody in their spine. <laughs> the dude that started the mosh pit got a concussion. It was so great. But they went from that to like some really happy, fun music, and everybody was just walked away. <laughs> Tomorrow night on the Three Beards, um, which will be available uh, for download. On three of your right. Facebook page and and uh, I think on your blog uh, your, your um your blogger page um, and iTunes and iTunes on Friday, uh, you'll have to ask me to, to to recount both of my moshing in high school stories because I've had some doozies. They had, actually my my band because of something that I did uh, for um, when I had a band in high school. Uh, they had to create an entirely new set of rules for next year's uh, rock show. Oh, that is gorgeous. I wish there was a rock <laughs> school. I wish there was a rock show at my school. Yeah, you'll have to ask me about that. You'll have to ask me about that tomorrow in the Three Beards. See, if only you didn't tell me about it, it could have been in your one, two, three. It still might. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Let me let me yeah, say like, this for those listening to this mm-hmm. podcast. If you want, uh, um, there's a story that I will be telling as part of my one true three um, that I swore I would never tell in public again. That is that's gorgeous. The fact that we got you to go against the most that you made to yourself. That's right. Uh, I have now told this story so many times to so many people, and then it became it became like this was like my free bird. People would I would go to parties and be like, tell that story, and I'm like, I'm so sick of this story. I don't want to tell it anymore. And like, well, no, now, free bird. So <laughs> I, I do that at show. Like I've only been to like three concerts. Yeah, I've only been to like one with some random show where my buddy Nick and his band was doing a battle of the bands with four other bands, like four other bands, and they lost. That was seven bands, and they didn't even make it into the top five. Yeah. Oh, that was awful. Yeah, but yeah was my, that? I got my one, two, three already picked out, and one of them uh, is a story I swore. I'm doing it special for you guys, so be appreciative. That's a story well, I thought I'd never tell again. Well, now you can just refer them to the three beards. See, there you go. There you yeah, go. It will be on the internet. It will be recorded, so you no longer have to tell it. You just tell them to go find it. That's right. Go download the three beards. Hey, you know what they should also do? They should listen to track eight from the Fin Troll <laughs> album. <laughs> oh, that was smooth. Because um, we need to get the ball rolling. <laughs> yeah, we really do. So I'm not even going to try to pronounce the Swedish version of this thing. Is It's lots of X's and consonants and one vowel. Uh, but the English translation is called Witch's Brew. Despite some of the odd vocalizations in that song, I really love the beat to it. That that is oh, definitely one of those songs where I'm like that you know that is a fantastic uh, fantastic beat and tone. That that it is. I really it's, I, I like I like the work the orchestration of this. Like it had a real it has a real nice ride to it. Yeah. Like if, I feel like if they brought like Metallica style brought like a symphony with them at all times, it'd be great. 
Like, even just walking, just walking down the road in some, like, random town, orchestration, and I need it. Absolutely. All right, we're going to go fast forward here as we do on, on the 411 Music Zone podcast. We start to get to the end where we're starting yeah, to run out of time, and, that, and then I'm just like, yeah, we, we now, after we've now told 50 different stories having nothing to do with Fintroll, it's like, hey, we actually got to get done done with this podcast. I got to get up for work tomorrow. So this that next really one, does happen every time. Like, no, it does. Like, the last few tracks, we have to rush through because we're like, shit, it's going to take both of us 15 minutes to plug everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this next one is called um, – oh, that and, – and I have to say um, – the, these these la- these final tracks were not anything special, as I recall. So here is uh, here here's the first of the nothing special, <laughs> the two servants. <laughs> Okay, I would I would file that under more of the same. Now, I would file that under if I ever want to run a haunted house to scare ten year old shitless. <laughs> I, I would totally just like put flashing lights and then dress up as a really scary like bat clown with a knife and then just put that on. Shits, shits and bricks. Bricks will be shat. <laughs> All right, sure. Um, I just yeah, it was it was fine. It was uh. I might, I might, at this point, I might have been a little fin trolled out, um, but I just, it, it didn't do anything for me. Uh, this is 10. the divas match. It was the divas match that should have been before <laughs> WrestleMania, the main event of WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, okay, so this next one, um, another one that I'm gonna ref- just protest and refuse to try to pronounce in Swedish, but the English version is called "Filled with Devilry." Ooh. So that one's fine. I mean, you know, it's uh, it's, a, it's an interesting song. It's a fun song. It's it's fin trollish. Yeah, it does. The, this is starting to get to the yeah. This is a bit derivative of itself. It's, yeah. It, it's fin troll. Yes, happy dancey. I'm gonna kill you with a knife. But otherwise, eh, it was. It's one of those songs that like if you like it, that's cool. If you don't, I don't blame you. Yeah. It almost there, there are certain albums which I think suffer from a lack of editing. This could have been easily nine songs and it would have been tight and perfect. And they went two songs, I think, over what it should have been without really producing something that was so unique that are like, no, you can't cut that. So, um, and, and you're the ruining next... the flow. <laughs> All right. All right. So this last one, track eleven, we have finally come to the glorious conclusion of the Fintral Bloods of it. Uh, podcast. This is our last track that we're going to take a look at. This is uh, The Midwinter Dragon.
that felt like they were trying very, very hard to produce like an epic song, and it was um, gratuitous. Yeah, I could see. I mean, I actually really liked the song because it was it really was so different from the stuff we had before. Like anything, like this felt kind of like a black metal song, really. Yeah, that was kind of thing. It was like, you know, just kind of felt like mayhem with uh, with more instruments. It it sounds like mayhem walk, walked into like, I don't know, walked into a walked into beer fest. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of what it was. I mean, I, like I really did like it because I did feel the epic. I, I did feel what they were doing. Like I, I felt that it was an epic song, but I think they did kind of overdo it with that quiet intro and the really quiet outro. I think they tried a little too hard because, like, I got. Speaking of epic black metal, like Emperor, like I got their first album the like yesterday. I got a promo of it. That's how freaking awesome it is. <laughs> I got a promo from '94. Like that is epic black metal done right. That right. is everything. Everything feels well placed and has like a nice rise to it. Everything built. This kind of felt out of place. But, yeah. I mean, it, it's bound to because we're talking about Fin Troll, where it's kind of like a darker version of folk metal. This felt like, felt like almost like a. Let's see, where, where would I put this? Y- yeah, it's it's like Cradle of Filth with an orchestra. <laughs> I don't even like Cradle of Filth that much, but it kind of sounded like Cradle of Filth. Yeah, you know, it's, now that you mention it, I'm actually a big Cradle of Filth fan, but that's exactly what that sounded like. Shooting that, that, that blood-curdling scream in the beginning, that was that was straight out of Cradle of Filth's wheelhouse. Which is not really the way you want to end a Fin Troll album, if you ask me. So, um, you know, overall, I think it's a it's a it's a B minus. Um, there was plenty of good, but not enough good to make me. I, I mean, like I said, it's not like there was a tremendous amount of bad. It just not particularly. There was great and then not interesting. You know what I mean? So it kind of averages out to just being meh. Yeah, I mean, it's no hate breed. <laughs> well, yeah, well, what I, is? <laughs> That's the garbage from Baxter at the dump down the road. Uh, no, 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 time yeah, to murder. Yes, yeah, time, time to murder this album. I can't wait for us to get to a really shitty album we review, and we just go. We really do just time to murder it. I don't know. Tell us about putting putting anything out anytime soon. Hi, Jeremy. Well, how, Hi, Lambert. We'll call you. We should call in Lambert for that, just to watch us two just totally massacre it. No, I'm already, I think, banned for life from from the man cave for for our Tim Tebow podcast. I don't think that's necessary. Uh, oh well, I love both podcasts. <laughs> I, I support Lambert's stuff. I support the man cave and the Radlich Broadcasting Network. Excellent. Radlich right. in broadcasting, but yeah, this album. But this album, I actually listened to it a second time. I think I honestly downgraded a little because I had it like at an 87, which for me is usually um, I'd buy it. Like if I saw it cheap, I'd buy it. But I'm honestly going to downgrade it maybe to um, like an 86, which I know you're like, well, what's the fucking difference? <laughs> 86 is more like it was good, but it wasn't as good. Like I wouldn't buy it unless it was dirt cheap and I had some extra change on me. For, for me, this is one of those ones where I'm going to – um, take the take the songs that I like, throw them in a mix of other of other stuff like my running mix or something, and then I'll probably never listen to the rest of the album again. Oh, you couldn't you couldn't run to this, but let's be fair. You would like be like running, and then you're like da 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 da, and you'd be like trying to not <laughs> like skip and hop. <laughs> that, that's like, great because I run around the jail, and there's a portion of the jail where uh, <laughs> people can, see, can people can like look, look out and get some fresh air. One of the more open bay areas of the jail, and I get and they root for me every time I'm running. They're like they, you know, they hoot and holler. <laughs> yeah, so that's I'm sure you love that's it. That's all I need is to be listening to Findroll and start skipping past the da- the the towers. Oh, I skip like I know I've mentioned this on the beers. I skip when I run, so it's really fun. It'd be funny if I were doing that. Are you on your way to but, Grandma's house? No, no. I just have legs that are two different sizes, so I have fun with skipping. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, like when I'm usually if I'm running, like I have to put on something like Amon or Morris or like Megadeth. I have to put on something with a uh, like either with like a like the folky vibe. It'll I can't put on something that's polka. I have to put on something that has like a lot of tin whistle and stuff like Waylander or Orphanland. But usually it has to be something fast and heavy and manly like Amon or Morris. 
All right. So speaking of fast and heavy, um, I've uh, Mark Henry. <laughs> uh, I don't know where you get fast from with that, but um, <laughs> he's fast for fast. sexual chocolate. Oh my God, England Dan, the modal node. <laughs> Jizz whalers. Sexual shock than the Jizz Whalers. So speaking of Jizz Whalers, in two weeks to begin our look back at Megadeth. Um, oh God. <laughs> oh, you'll get to see me super, super serious because I I adore that band. So you're gonna yeah, get like that, me in Samarcati mode. I'm going to be, like, doing – we, we can actually do that one while my kid's still up because cause I'll just let you talk and I'll, you know, put myself on mute. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's see if I can get Nick. I'll see if I can get Nick. It'll be even worse because he loves him as much as I do, and he knows him just as well as I do. Great. <laughs> hey, I'll just run the board and let you guys take over the podcast. <laughs> well, we're gonna, we'll, just, we'll just kind of buzz you whenever we're done with an album. Thanks. Um, but seriously, folks, in two weeks we begin our two-part – uh, look back at all 13 studio albums from Thrash Metal Pioneers, one of the big four, uh, Megadeth, Dave Mustaine's Megadeth. So we're going to look at... Megadeth, as I called him. Megadeth, yeah. Um, we're going to look at the first uh, six albums from Megadeth, and then in part two, which will be two weeks later, we'll do um, the, the remaining seven. And this is all gearing up for what we're going to do a couple more weeks down the road. Um, so you have two weeks... Megadeth Part 1, two weeks after that, Megadeth, Megadeth Part 2. Two weeks after that, we're going to look at um, the new Megadeth album, which will have been out about a month by the time we get around to it. Uh, after that, I think we decided that uh, we were going to do the new Children of Bodom. We'll be doing When does the new Black Sabbath come out? Uh, it'll be in June. So do you think we should do that one first, since the iron will probably be hot on that? All right. So after Mega, after we conclude Megadeth, um, in some order, and yeah. we'll pick it up once we get once we get a little bit closer, we'll be doing the new Black Sabbath album, the new Children of Bodom, and uh, Robert's pick, the new Amon Amarth. So that's Ooh, what, I can't wait. So that's what we've got going on in the music zone. Robert, um, why don't you talk a little bit about? Uh, we talked a little bit about it before, but just go ahead and plug the, your three beards. Talk, talk, talk. Uh, to yeah. And 401 about why they should go and uh, download the Three Beards podcast. I don't know if I can do it as well as you do, which I still don't know what blue means, but I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs> well, I'll have to have you explain what blue means tomorrow night on the Three Beards, which the Three Beards is me, my one of my best buddies from the community, Davis County Community College, Kevin Merrill, and his buddy, who's becoming my buddy, Fledge Rodden. The three of us, we talk about anything and everything. Usually we delve into sci fi fantasy topics because, well, it's recorded at a comic shop for a reason. We're all kind of big nerds. So we talk about more kind of, you know, the typical nerd fair. We talk about movies, and sometimes we get into music, and we'll talk about television, but occasionally we'll brush on uh, politics, which I know Kevin's like Ron Paul fanatic. I'm kind of in the middle, but I like trolling Kevin about being a Ron Paul fanatic. I don't know where Fletcher is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We, yeah, I, yeah, so I listen to the ground and find you're like, I think they're all three Ron Paul supporters. I'm like, eh, I like the guy. <laughs> I'm not like like Kevin who uh, was trying to sell people at the college. He was trying to sell them Ron Paul comic books. <laughs> <laughs> they made those. I'm like, Jesus. He actually sold one, which I was like, I cannot believe. It was like four bucks, too. I'm like, Christ. All right. So yeah, I'm like, yeah. So I will be on the Three Beards podcast tomorrow night, which, again, will be available for download on iTunes. Please go to iTunes. Check out the Three Beards after you're done with the Rattelich and Broadcasting Network, uh, where yeah. the rest of my podcasts lie. But, yeah, if you like Opie and Anthony, if you like whatever your local town um, morning zoo type show is, um, this is that kind of show with all the filters off. This is oh, Solomon. God, this is Solomon off. Grundy without the dampeners. It's just Solomon Grundy born on a Monday. It's uh, it's Solomon Grundy floats right skin titties. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I, it's I, funny because like I'm, I, was, yeah. I'm, I think I'm the problem with that. Like if if it were just like those two with somebody else, I think it'd be a lot more tame. But I feel like being a filthy bastard. Yeah, you're you're pretty out of control. Um, but they've been gracious enough. <laughs> they've been gracious enough to let me into their little uh, playhouse. 
so I'll be coming with my with my stories and my opinions and such. Um, my 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 one fear about this is that I know that when I'm on, when I'm on the Casual Heroes, which you can check out all of the various podcasts I've done with the Casual Heroes folks at thecasualheroes.com. I tend to take over. <laughs> so I mean, as oh, you this is going to be fun. I, I can be a bit verbose and I, and certainly opinionated, and that's not like I I feel like oh my opinion is more important than everybody else's, but um I I can't fix cars and I don't play instruments. This is what I do, folks. I talk, you know. <laughs> so when wait, you, that's when me you, too. Oh shit! <laughs> when hey, you, this is gonna be fun. Two yeah. alpha discussers. <laughs> <laughs> Two alpha convers alpha conversationalists. Um, so it'll be a, it'll be a fun show, and people can check that out Friday. Um, okay. So the Metal Hammer gonna, of Doom is back? Oh, yes, finally. Like, it felt like at first when I started writing, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm not feeling this. Then by the end of it, I was just sitting there typing away. Like, I got almost 3,000 words, which is not pretty shit. Not too bad. Pretty pretty good. Like, that Jeff Hanneman one, like that and Tim Limp Bases, like, it, those took me so long because I put a lot into those. Like, I, I forgot to bitch about award shows. <laughs> like, I was totally going to rip into the uh, Golden Gods Awards. Did you hear about the Golden Gods Awards? No, I don't it's pay attention. That's yeah, Neil per- Neil Pert and uh, Jeff Hoagland both lost to the drummer for Hailstorm. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on the 411. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, it was awful. Like, Black Veil Brides won the best song, and they proceeded to uh, troll the audience. Like, hey, Black you fat bearded Bride. mother. Yeah, Is they it? fat bearded mother fuckers. Look, we won three years in a row. Y'all don't mean shit because they were booing the hell out of them. They proceeded to rip apart the fans that were there. And then at the end, they're like, hey, thanks to our fans. Like, I wanted to hit them because they were so douchey and their music is so awful. Yeah, that's the, the only thing they have are guitars. Oh, I'll, I'll send you a link to uh, all, all of who won. Like, David Draymond's new band won Best New Artist. So who did they like, get this thing? Cecil People? <laughs> Cecil, the Cecil People, the action figure. Game Boy for when it goes to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was that bad. Like, they beat out Ghost, which I was like, wow, really? Yeah, they beat out Ghost. Uh, let's see, the other, I forget what one, I remember the year before, Korn won Best New Album for their Corn Step album. <laughs> yeah, it is, like, they claim to be a metal award show, but I kind of sort of want to take a shit and wipe my ass on their white carpet. Like, even Jericho hosting it couldn't couldn't save it. Oh. Uh, all right. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll try to uh, do it next time. But yeah, this week in the Metal Hammer, go back. Let me get back on plugging my topic. <laughs> this week in the Metal Hammer, we talk about Timbaland and Basis is uh, stuff. We talk about we, we, me. I talk about uh, Jeff Hanneman. I talk about Ozzy Osbourne saying he's gonna stay sober for his daughter's wedding, which I don't know how he could. Don't you believe it? Oh yeah, he's like you know I'm gonna stay sober for. Uh, for her wedding, especially on the way to it. I don't know how good that was, but that it's 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 my Aussie. I just made it up and I'm gonna go with it. Yeah, I talk about that. I answer two two reader comments from three two months ago. That was great. <laughs> oh yeah, it was funny. I actually get on the uh for like what did I do? Oh yeah, for the uh global metal band of the week. I went to Monaco Monaco which is, you know, right off of France. <laughs> they actually had a black metal band from there that was pretty killer. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> this is like the size of Rhode Island, and yet they managed to have awesome music. <laughs> yeah, I do that, and, uh, you know, everything else, as for anything else I have to plug, Sean Comer's 3Rs, why not? It comes out the same day I mine does on Sundays, so you should totally go read both of those. All right. Speaking of Sean Ooh, Comer. And, uh, just, just one last thing. And tonight, uh, midnight, Stephen uh, or uh, Randall, Stephen Randall, the guy who he does a lot of shit in the uh, game zone. He's doing a gaming podcast at midnight that should be streaming live somewhere. You should go check it out because I think I'm going to be on it, even though I don't play that many video games. <laughs> if my Skype holds up. Everybody has a podcast. Speaking of everybody has a podcast, <laughs> Everybody Loves a Villain is the new podcast from Robert Winfrey, which is being featured on the Radlich in Broadcasting Network. Not the Zonka Podcasting Network, but the Radlich in Broadcasting Network. Ah, who listens to Zonka's stuff anyway, right? Yeah, crazy Zonka for this crazy podcast. I mean, does the man cave count in Zonka's stuff? <laughs> All right, don't don't poke the badger. Um, 
<laughs> I mean, I love the band game. I love that and Ground and Pound. I listen to both y'all every week. <laughs> um. Anyway, so Robert Winfrey uh, got himself a podcast right here on the Rattle Legend Broadcasting Network called Everybody Loves a Villain. Uh, I was on the inaugural one talking about Terminator, uh, which apparently was very well received. It actually did did a lot better than some of the other ones I've done myself lately. So that was pretty cool. Um, I'm not joking about that. Uh, that he just did a follow up with my good buddy from the 401 Ground and Pound show, Pat Mullen, where they took on the first uh, bunch of Bond villains from the early Bond mm-hmm. films. So go ahead and check that out in the Rattle Legend Broadcasting Network. And at some point when I can get to it, I will post that in the movie zone. Um, this past week, the 401 Ground and Pound radio show returned uh, to its regularly scheduled time of 9 o'clock, and we previewed um, TRT versus Not Yet Ready for Prime Time. That is Vitor <laughs> Belfort. TRT. <laughs> <laughs> that is Vitor SMB. Belfort versus, versus Luke Rockhold in Brazil. Um, Sam the Eagle reminded us, TRT. Yes. yes. Um, so we previewed that. You can go ahead and list, uh, check that out in, in the MMA Zone, 401mania.com. Uh, last week, Sean Comer and I, Long Road to Ruin, we did the Dollars Trilogy. And next week, um, so a week from today, as a matter of fact, <laughs> is the uh, Long Road to Ruin Scream Part 1. So we'll be looking at Scream 1 and Scream 2. And then two weeks after that, we'll uh, finish up with Scream 3 and Scream 4. And two weeks after that, before I go on vacation, we will be doing Jurassic Park. When I come back from vacation, we will be doing the Superman, um, much to my wife's chagrin, apparently. We will be doing the Superman uh, series of four movies. Not Superman Returns. I'm not touching that one. But Superman 1. Oh, yeah, you're going to touch Superman 4? Jeez. You'll you'll hear why when we do the podcast. You can also check out... You Is anybody also, jumping in on that one? What, Superman? Is anybody jumping in on that one yet? Any third party? No, no, nobody has offered to uh, do the Superman podcast yet. Ooh, I might say, well, I mean, if y'all want me, I'd be happy to be on. Yeah, if you want to be on, sure. Um, well, uh, when we get a little bit closer to that, we'll, we'll take care of it. But I will, have, by that point, have seen Man of Steel. So Jeff Harris and I will uh, do a post-movie discussion of Man of Steel uh, once that comes out. And uh, a week from yesterday, a week from Monday, Jeff Harris and I will return to the summer blockbuster series as we have our post discussion, post movie discussion of Star Trek Into Darkness. Or as I call it, the Wrath of Sherlock. I will be going to, I will be taking my kid to gymnastics, then dropping my kid off at home and ditching my family for a day of Star Trek and Lion Tacos. Lion Uh, Tacos. Thirty. Yes. $35 $35 Lion Tacos from Taco Fusion. And if one of you motherfuckers ever tries to protest Taco Fusion and get Lion to meet off the menu, I'm going to come I'm going to find you and hit you in the head with a frying pan. Leave the Please. Lion I'm not even joking about this. Leave the oh, Lion God. meat alone. Really really poor, poor Simba. Is, is that what they did with James Earl Jones? <laughs> they grind him <laughs> in the Lion meat. <laughs> Well, you didn't see. In, no, these are the lion they're not like lions poached from the Serengeti. These are farm-raised lions. I'm not even joking about that. <laughs> this is a lion in the natural cornfield. <laughs> <laughs> these are farm-raised lions for meat that you can be purchased and then reconfigured <laughs> into Mexican cuisine. Taco Fusion in Tampa Bay. If you're in the Tampa they Bay area, that? check out Taco Fusion. Well, I guess lions aren't really that endangered anymore, are they? No, they are, but you know, but not the <laughs> farm raised ones. <laughs> yeah, they're endangered. Well, guys, I'm gonna spend like a hundred bucks. Out of it. I'm gonna get a thirty-five dollar lion taco, and then I don't know how much it costs, but I'm gonna get myself a camel burrito. I'm not even joking about that. You can order camel meat in your uh, in your Mexican cuisine at this at Taco Fusion in Tampa Bay. I hope you don't find a toe in your burrito. Oh, boo. <laughs> my hump, my hump, my lovely lady lump. Oh right. no, I don't want to check out your lovely lady lump. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing Star Trek as well. Like me, my, like my mom and my stepdad and uh, Nick. Like this whole, we're all gonna go see it. Like my mom loves Star Trek. Who just thunk it, right? She beat Skyrim before I did. I did. That should tell you something. All right. All right so I think that's it. Um, 
uh, that's all the podcasts that I feel like plugging tonight. So, oh, Jesus. Uh, oh, what did you set this for, an hour? <laughs> so um, come back next week. Uh, sorry, come back in two weeks for our first look at uh, Megadeth Part 1 of our uh, career retrospective. For uh, the equally verbose, <laughs> fun time, Robert Cooper. Fun time? Is that what I am now? I am fun time, Robert Cooper. I still you're now, as far as I'm concerned, you're dubbed now fun time, Robert Cooper. Um, that should be my that, name. That should be my name on the forum. There you go, fun time. So for fun time, Robert Cooper, <laughs> I am a reporter. <laughs> off. Quite frankly, he's mortified. <laughs> Uh, this has been the 411 uh, Music Zone album review podcast for Finn Trolls Blood Vet. Uh, until ne- next time, we see you. Be well, be safe, and for the love of God, behave. This-